good Thursday morning to you. It is January the 20th and the month is almost over. So a fast start to 2022. Um, we had a good night's rest last night. I hope you did. Had a incredible time last night um, with our men's group and especially the small group that I'm a part of. Um, man, just a rich time. We're seeing the Lord grow us in relationship and uh, boy, it's just a good time. I understand the ladies had a good night last night in the book of James together, and students had a good night, choir, and the kids rehearsing, uh, getting ready for this Sunday morning in our Next Generation service. Really excited about this service, and as we celebrate what God has done here at First Conyers in making us <clears throat> a, a multi-generational church, and um, it's just good to see the body of Christ reflect His heart in that. Uh, this morning, just one particular prayer request I want to bring before you. There are a number of them, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to mention one that we have been praying for over a year now. Um, pray for the Petresca family. Uh, Constantine, as you know, has been battling cancer and uh, just not, not good reports this week. And so the doctors are, are really kind of at a, at a loss as what to do next. But their their faith is grounded in the Lord. And uh, God has the final word in this, right? Um, so their hearts are where they're going to trust God and, and praise Him regardless. And so be praying for the Petrescas. Uh, just that God's grace and His mercies continue to pray for healing uh, and ultimately God's will to be done in their lives. So this morning we're going to be looking at one of my favorite passages and probably many of you, it's your favorite passage as well. It's John chapter 15 where as Jesus is leaving from that location where he had the Last Supper with his disciples and he's on his way to the garden, um, he has this discourse that John covers in chapters 15 to 17. And this particular one, the vine and the branches, we're going to look at this morning. And, and I wish we had time to exhaust it thoroughly, but, but we really don't. But there's a song that came to my heart this morning, um, and Leah, particularly for y'all, think um, maybe as I was praying for y'all this morning but it's an old hymn called he leadeth me and it's not one that I'm real familiar with with playing so you may have to bear with me but I think everybody's familiar with it he leadeth me oh blessed thought oh words with heavenly comfort from what Wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. Some bit seems of deepest gloom, some's where Eden's bowers bloom. I water still, O oh, troubled sea. Still tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own hand. He leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by and he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content whatever lot I see, by thy hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory is won, even death's cold wave, I will not flee since God
by his own hand. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his Being a faithful follower of him, knowing that by his hand he leads us and every episode, every event, every circumstance in our life, he's promised to give us and has given us and he promises to abide with us and by his hand to lead us and by the comfort of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit guides and we walk in the Spirit of God, we can trust him with whatever it is that um, that God uh, has in our life. He's leading us. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 15, Jesus begins by speaking of Him being the true vine. Probably as Jesus was passing from the location where He um, had had that last supper with His disciples, walking through a vineyard. Uh, vineyards were prevalent there in Jerusalem, and and Jesus used it as an opportunity to, to take and do an illustration with his disciples and most likely perhaps grabbed a branch of, of one of the grapevines, and he said this to them. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser, or the husbandman. Now, Jesus wasn't contrasting himself here to false vines, but the, the phrasing here is, I am the, the, the true vine. We might say in today's vernacular, I am the real deal. Um, all substance comes from me. And of course, we know that, that a branch on a, on a vine, because he's going to speak of us being the branches, uh, we get all our nourishment from the vine. And the reason for a branch, the reason for a vine is that it bears fruit. You don't plant grape vines for ornamentation. As a matter of fact, they're really not a pretty plant. Um, they, they, don't, they don't flower in that sense that, that other plants do, but, but there's a purpose in that vine, and that is that it would bear fruit and the grape. And of course, those days in Palestine, the, the, the only safe thing to drink was, was the fruit of the vine, uh, which would have been wine. And so Jesus reaches down. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. He's the one that dresses the vine, and he dresses the branches so that they will produce fruit. He says, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, I mean, he uh, misinterpret this phrase that Jesus is speaking of here. It has nothing to do with uh, what some would say is that, that there's a possibility that we can lose our salvation. Uh, that, is, that just does not bear out with the rest of Scripture. I hold to, without any reservation, that once one is truly saved, regenerated, they are born again, they're saved, and saved for all of eternity. But there are many who, and we saw even in Jesus' day, there were many that followed along with him, but that really did not place their trust in him. They were tagalongs, if you will. And we have many in the church today that are just kind of tagalongs. They're maybe they're trying to have some morality in their lives, and so they think church going to church will bring a good morality in their life. Maybe they have other motives for being in the church. Maybe it's to their advantage, etc. But they're not true believers. And there's a distinction between a true believer and one who is just a pretender, if you will. You see, the true believer will bear fruit 
in their life. There is a result of their salvation that, that works or fruit is born out of their life. We know that Jesus said that in the church, in the body of Christ, there will be some that, that would be distinguished as wheat, but there are also tares. There, there are weeds among the wheat. The wheat, he was referring to those that would be true believers, but there are tares, not really true believers. They're just there, weeds, if you will, in the garden. And he says, don't you worry about trying to pull those weeds out of the garden. At the final harvest, I'll take care of that. Because oftentimes when you're taking weeds away from the wheat field, you can damage the true wheat that's there. And so we know um, not only from what Jesus taught, but also from Paul's letters that in the churches that he was writing to, there were also um, those that professed to be true believers, but they really weren't. So this is what Jesus is speaking of here. But then he says those that are that are true branches, the Father prunes them. He, he, um, he, he cuts away so that they'll bear more fruit. Now, I love gardening, and every year I go through with my plants. I'm going to do that in just a couple of weeks here before the spring comes, and I'm going to prune away uh, some of the branches that, that, are, that are growing kind of wild. I'm, I'm going to prune them away so that when the spring comes and the buds begin to develop, I'll have greater flowering on those branches. I'll have, I'll have more producing of what it is that I want to see produced on those branches. Otherwise, there's just a lot of energy sapped by these, these stray shoots or these long overgrown branches that it's not going to flower as, as well. And so here's the principle that Jesus is speaking of. The Father prunes those branches. Why? So they will bear more fruit. Verse 3 says, Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. You're clean because you've trusted in the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Now this fruit that he's speaking of is what I believe Paul makes reference to in Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit. But the only way to produce this fruit is if we abide in Jesus. There's a natural tendency for us to think we can do it on our own. Before we were saved, we thought we could do it on our own. Adam and Eve thought they could do it on their own. They thought they could clean up their act of sin by covering themselves over with fig leaves. And we too fall into the same thing. But if we're going to bear fruit... We cannot bear fruit apart from remaining in the vine. That is staying connected to Jesus, staying in fellowship with him, walking with him. That's one of the reasons we're encouraged to have daily time in the word. I've got to reconnect with Jesus every single morning. If I don't, I am disconnected and I'm operating on rote and I'm not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And so I thank you for joining me every morning as I just share some thoughts from my quiet time with the Lord. We want to abide in Him and walk in Him. There are many Christians existing that just try to do it on their own. And listen, it's evident in their lives that it's just fleshly produce, producing and not vineyard producing. So we want to abide in Him so that we might produce fruit. Verse 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. Here again, Jesus is making reference to those that are, that are not true believers. I think he's making reference here to the final judgment. Uh, that uh, At that very last time, that very last day, they will be judged. Many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do that in your name? And he'll say, depart from me, for I never knew you. And so it's important for us to examine, as Paul encourages to examine, whether or not you're in the faith. Are you just going along with whatever church routine that might be there, um, kind of taking on a... a um, maybe a social gospel or taking taking on uh, thinking that you're born again because, well, mom and dad were Christians and, and my grandmom and granddad were Christians and we're in a Christian nation, so to speak, which is not true. Um, 
and and without having really trusted, repented of your sins and placed your trust in Christ. That's the examination that we need to make. Verse 7, if you abide in me and I, my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And so the, the key, I guess, to answered prayer, what Jesus is saying here, is that we walk in fellowship with him. You see, if we're walking in fellowship with him, we know his heart. If we're walking in fellowship with him through the word, we know his word. And, and, and we know more of what the Father's will and the Father's desire is. And so as we abide in him, as we walk in him daily, um, we know his heart. And ultimately, God is the one who answers according to his will, not according to our will. Verse 8, he says, By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and, and so prove to be my disciples. A telling proof of being a follower of Jesus, not just being saved, but being a disciple of Jesus, is that we bear much fruit. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You want to know the secret to having joy? It's abiding in Jesus. It's walking in him. And that doesn't mean we'll always be happy, but we'll have joy in the midst of whatever it is that comes our way in life if we abide in him. This joy is, is what we might refer to as an unspeakable joy. If you've experienced it, you know it. Uh, that where you may not be happy, but at the end of the day, you have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength, the psalmist said. Love, peace, and joy, these come from the Holy Spirit. The only way we can receive that or have that is abiding in him. Well, let's wrap this up, beginning in verse 12. He says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Here Jesus is speaking of what he's about to do, lay down his life. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends. For that I've heard from my Father and I've made known to you. We are the friends of God. Where we once were enemies to God, we made ourselves enemy of Him. When we placed our trust in Christ, He calls us His friends. Um, we talk about having a best friend, but there's no greater friend than that is of Jesus. Can you say amen to that? You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask in the name of my Father, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today, that whatever you place your hands to, whatever you place your heart to, that you'll bring glory to him. Jesus said the way that we glorify the Father is that we walk with him and we're obedient to him. The purpose is that we bring glory to his name. Pray that God would give you an opportunity today that whatever the Lord, whoever the Lord places in your life, that you'd be able to sow a seed of the gospel in their hearts. That if you recognize a seed has already been sown there, that God uses you to cultivate that seed that's been planted there. And by God's grace, we would be able to witness somebody come to Christ, place their faith in him and trust him just as we have experienced at some point in our life. I pray the Lord blesses you. He keeps you. Looking forward to seeing you this next weekend on Sunday morning with our next generation service. Uh, bring somebody with you. It's something to celebrate as we glorify God for what he's doing here. Um, continue to pray for the Petresca family. Uh, Leah, Constantine, we love y'all. Um, Pray everybody has a good day. God bless you.